Now it's time for the second in our series for Lent from our very special guest, the Archbishop of York, Dr. John Sentamu. He's interviewed three remarkable women whose faith he's found particularly inspiring. The Almighty has his own plan for us, and we all know he moves in mysterious ways. But for one young woman, that meant giving up her savings to buy a big purple bus. 25-year-old Emily Finch has an indomitable spirit and she's following what she believes is a calling from God. Student Emily created a charity enabling churches to build relationships with young people. Instead of a church hall, this is a youth club on Wales. I'm wondering in my brain, you know, what made you think particularly that God was calling you and calling you to sink all your money into a second-hand bus? <laughs> so true. I've had a lot of questions about that. I think a bus because it's mobile and we're helping local churches do youth work. So you spent all your savings? Yeah. It was the money that my lovely parents put aside, probably to go towards a deposit on a house or something like that. Is it paying any dividends? It definitely is paying dividends. We've seen amazing things happen in young people's lives, and they say that the bus is like their second home. Most of the young people who come on our bus aren't Christian, but the fact that we, we're Christians doesn't seem to bother them at all. They know that we're there for them if they want to talk about God, but also we don't have to talk about God. We love them wherever they're at in life. Have you ever had experience of young people who come there and as soon as you start talking about praying, talking about God, they said, oh my goodness. Oh, all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But often they... they end up loving it. I think they love that we talk about the real things in life. We had um, a boy on recently and we were doing like a prayer activity and it was listing the things um, that you are good at, your good qualities that God has given you. And he said, I've got nothing. And so many of our young people don't believe they've got any worth. And it's a, such a privilege to walk alongside them and show them that in God's eyes, they are so loved and they, they are precious to him. The theme for today is thinking about hopes, our hopes and dreams for the future. And so what I want to say is dream big. And I think all of these things, God has so much greater plans than we can imagine. The bus is the most recent thing that I've trusted God in. It wasn't going from no faith to suddenly being like, I'm going to buy a bus. There was lots of other things I trusted in him. Yeah, as they say, you know, little, little drops of water, mm. if a lot of them keep coming, keep coming, eventually yeah. they'll turn a water wheel. Yeah. They? I've seen people's lives change, and that's been the most incredible thing to witness that, to just see God at work, and that is the best job that I could ever have. So, yeah, it's changed my life. So how do you see your future? A career in public transport, maybe? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, at the moment, the charity is growing massively, which is really exciting. And I imagine I'm going to be doing the bus for quite a bit longer. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Hosanna.
When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna Come have your way among us We welcome you here, Lord Jesus Hosanna Comic Relief was launched on Christmas Day 1985 and since then has raised billions supporting projects across the UK and the world. Josie Darby has been to one scheme being cooked up in Somerset. It's a cookery course run by Methodist teacher Jacqueline Seal where it's only men allowed. Morning everybody. I thought it'd be really good if we did something for red noses and I've got some little red noses look. The Men Get Cooking classes have been running for 16 years and have grown after funding from Comic Relief. So Jackie, where did the idea for Men Get Cooking come from? Uh, my Methodist background means that really I want to use all my skills for the good of everybody else. So, so why, why men only? Some wanted to just dabble. They were at, maybe at a low ebb. For example, if, if someone was bereaved and they were maybe having to get by on ready meals. And also, sometimes we had people who suddenly found themselves in a situation where they needed to cook. Yeah, because when you try and slice that, it's going to... My wife, uh, Portia, has a few health problems at the moment. I've certainly taken on more of the cooking. And beyond the cooking, Jackie, what, what, what are people telling you that they're getting out of it on a very personal level? It's so healing, really. Just that humour. This is the most perfect good quiche going. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got stories and, and episodes in our life where we just need somebody to help us along the way, don't yeah. we? As it's a comic relief project, look who's turned up. It's comedian Milton Jones. Reminds me of being in a sandpit. <laughs> Do you cook? Uh, you know Gordon Ramsay is a really good cook who swears a lot. Yes. I'm like him, only I'm not a really good cook. Now why is that? Is it because you're a man? No, it's because I'm incompetent. So what do you think about the fact that it's more than about just cooking? I think, especially for men, I find it difficult just to chat. And it's really useful to have something that they can do and talk off the back of it because uh, men aren't particularly good at opening up and just being themselves. The big thing for me was was packing in work. After 50 years of getting out and going to work all day, I suddenly no. stop. And the psychological adjustment I found very hard. Because I never did much cooking. Mm -hmm. My wife usually did it and mm -hmm. my mother wasn't keen being interfered with in the kitchen. She was an old school, yes, <laughs> you know, and they weren't allowed in. And do you think that it's important that Comic Relief, who fund so many things across the world, also recognise the need within individual communities. People are poor in all sorts of ways and often it's emotionally and that kind of poverty is sometimes harder to see than you know not having money or food. That's really good, yeah. good now. I'm a natural. <laughs> For me it's a privilege uh, uh, as a Christian to be walking along their journey. If we can help each other along, faith and life, we're just all in the hands of, of God really aren't we? With the quiches ready, it's now time for the all-important taste test. I'm getting wood, I'm getting onions, <laughs> which is weird because I didn't put any in. Wow, that was good fun. What did you make of that then, Milton? Uh, it was great, wasn't it, seeing those old guys coming out of themselves. And what about for you personally, first time having a crack in the kitchen? 
uh, it could be the beginning of something very big indeed. Oh, I hope to taste the fruits of your labour, Milton. Yeah. Well, if you would like to donate to Men Get Cooking or any of the other fabulous causes supported by Comic Relief, you can do so on your mobile phone. If you'd like to donate £5, text the word SONG to 70205. Or if you'd like to donate £10, you can text SONG to 70210. Thank you. 